Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. In this video we are going to talk about the problem LinkedIn connections. So let's get started. All right. So the problem LinkedIn connections was a typical graph problem. Now don't panic with this term graph. We are going to break down this problem into a, into small small steps and try to solve this problem. So in order to solve this problem we'll look at various steps. So we are going to talk about the problem statement. We are going to understand what's the meaning of the problem what is the problem trying to convey. We are we will try to model the data which is given to us in order to efficiently be able to solve this problem and after modeling the data we'll try how can we come up with a logic to use the data to solve the given problem. and after all these steps we'll implement the logic that we have implementation using any favorite language c++ or python and last success so if we do everything correctly we'll surely get a green tick so let's get started right so let's read the problem statement and try to understand what the problem is trying to tell us so the name of the problem is linkedin connections so let's see the problem statement so Whenever two people are connected to each other on LinkedIn, they are considered as connections of each other. A term degree of connection is defined by the distance between a person and the connection. For example, if Rahul is <clears throat> connected to Neha and Neha is connected to Rahul, in this case, okay, so this is the connection and this is the degree of this connection. So, okay, it is very important to grow your network on LinkedIn, and so in order to do this, one needs to send connection requests requests to different people. However, LinkedIn has a restriction in terms of a person to whom you can send a connection request. You can only send connection requests to people who are your third degree connections. All right, so I can only send request to a person who is at at most at a distance of three from me. Given the number of people on the LinkedIn platform and all the connections answer and queries in which. Wake we asks you if a connection request can be sent to the person or not. All right. Um, the first line of the input contains teacher N, M. Okay. Yes or no. Um. All right. So, from reading the problem statement, we understand that this is some. some kind of problem like something like a social network right in where in if we have to send someone a friend request there has there is a condition that allows us to send friend request only to some people like we cannot just send friend request to everyone we need to have someone who is a mutual friend of them or is a or a mutual or mutual friend of them um then only we can send the request so okay in the next section let's try to understand this problem in a better way all right so uh, pardon my bad hand writing please um so let's try to understand this problem in a better way so let's take the example that was given to us so it was let me just quickly take a look at the example so it was neha raj rahul so rahul is connected to neha so let's say we have rahul denoted as a boxer a box or a circle or a ball rahul is connected to neha so let's denote neha with n and neha is connected to raj let's denote raj as r a so we have these three people rahul is connected to neha and neha is connected to raj so in this case distance between rahul and neha is 1 right so if i say distance of rahul and neha is equal to 1 because there is uh, to reach from rahul to neha i just cross this one road right think of it as cities and roads okay distance from neha to, uh, distance from neha to rahul neha to rahul is same is just the opposite right 1 similarly um uh, distance from neha to raj is also one crossing this road only and 
crossing this road basically and distance between um one second yeah and distance between raj and neha is also one just the vice versa of this right vice versa all right so now now things get interesting now let's talk about the distance between rahul and raj so d r a r which is rahul and raj is equal to how many roads to be cross we cross this and we cross this right so this road and this road so how many roads to be cross we cross two roads so distance is 2 is there any other way to reach no right this is the shortest distance that i have to cover so it's 2 if suppose there was a connection from rahul to raj let's say like this then obviously drr would not be 2 it would be 1 but that's not the case here so we consider it as 2 all right so um hope this makes sense i mean what we are trying to do is we are treating people as uh, we are trying to treat these people as so the people are cities basically and these connections are roads right so it's something like you know you have only the, uh, you you don't have a lot of fuel so you only have fuel to reach at a place which is at most three distance like you can only cross three roads at most you can, you have a car a hypothetical car which does not have a lot of mileage who would want that kind of car in real life but for the problem sake let's consider we have a car which can only cover three roads so the problem is basically can you reach that city from the given city using that car something like that right we can model it so the problem is basically to given a uh, source city let's say source city city is people with source person let's see if we can reach the destination person or not and if we are able to reach it then that means that we are able to send the connection request as well right so in the next section let's see how we can model the given data and let's take a closer look on the input and output of this problem all right so in this section we'll take a look at the input and try to model the given input data to uh, better save save the data and uh, try to solve that problem with the given data so basically what i'm trying to say is in the previous section we talked about people as cities and uh, these connections as roads right so obviously at first when you take a look something like let's say this is rahul neha raj let's consider someone as uh, kartik manoj right so these are people they may have any number of connections this may be connected let's consider another person who is uh, ram this connected and now this is connected so something like this right so from how how would this data would be given to me is some like in the problem Uh, the data is given to me as something like um uh raj rahul is connected to neha then neha is connected to raj raj is connected to manoj manoj is connected to kartik kartik is connected to ram so how can i make sense out of this data which will enable me to solve the problem like on top of my mind when i see that okay can rahul send connection request to kartik let's see One, two, three, four. So Kartik is a distance of four from Ram. So no, he cannot send the request. But how do I tell my code? How do I write a program? How do I implement this idea in the form of code? Basically, how do I talk to the computer to make my computer understand the way? Whenever some random person is given to you, you have to travel in a way so that you are able to find this. So let's first take a look at the input and output given the problem. Take this. Uh, take a uh, take an example input. try to model it and then we'll go around to how to model the given data in form of the data, data structures that we have in the given language lists or vectors or whatever we'll take a look at that so yeah so now let's take the example and put right so let me just quickly answer 
so we have sample data which is given to us as um, just a second yeah. so we have 12 people the first line is people the second line is number of connections then we have connections 1 2 1 5 2 4 5 3 5 6 1 7 7 8 guys i'm just dra drawing i mean i'm just writing it on the on my tablet so so that we can have a look at it later so i'm just copying the test case 7 8 then we have 1 9 9 10 7 10 10 11 11 12 11 12 then we have 4 6 then we have the source then we have three queries 2 12 and 11 all right so now let's do one thing let's try to model this given it okay so first number 12 what is this is the number of people okay 13 what is it number of connections right now let's let's start drawing something okay so let's consider this one as we talked about consider these numbers as cities and this connection one two one five as the roads right so one is a city two is a city there's a road between these two okay then we have one and five so let's okay now we have two and four five and three five and six one and seven seven and eight one and nine nine and ten one and nine nine and ten we have seven and ten so this is a connection ten and eleven <clears throat> eleven and twelve four and six so where is six so let's draw something like All right, four and six, everything done. How many connections we drew? 13 connections, uh, we have 12 people. Now, we are said that source is one basically. So we are starting at the city one, okay. And we have three queries. So in every query we have to tell, can we travel to this city or not? Let's see two. Uh, how many roads are there between one and two? The shortest distance basically. I see only this road, right? Let me change the color. To... Hmm. I see this road only. So, distance is one. So, can we send the request? Yes. Basically, can we travel to the city? Yes. So, we say yes. 12. 1 and 12. Let's see. Where is 12? 12 is here. So, 1. Let's take. We have different paths, right? So let's take this path from seven. So one, two, three, four. Distance becomes four. Can we travel to? Uh, is there some other path? Let's see. One, two, three, four. Cannot travel again, right? So distance is four more than three. We say no. Eleven. One two three and this path also leads us to one two three so we say okay for 11 the distance is three we say yes okay 
um, let's check the expected output it was yes no yes so i mean that's how this is what the problem looks like this is how we understand the uh, given input and output now let's try to think how can we model this given input in terms of structures that we have in our programming languages right so um let's go down a little bit um <clears throat> all right so so let's try to understand So now let's quickly try to understand how can we model this. So number of people, first line, number of people is an integer, right? So we can store it as a number, normal number. So we can say that it's a number of people. A simple integer can be stored in a simple variable, right? I mean simple variable, I mean simple data type integer variable everything is a variable right so we cannot say that can be stored in a variable so number of people is in integer number of connections number of connections is also an integer and then we have connections now now comes the interesting part connections this is and this is M, so we have M connections now. Important part is how can we model this? So let's try to think. I have something like one, which can be connected to two, can be connected to five, can be connected to six, right? Something like five can be connected to seven, comma eight right I have something like 14 which could be connected to six comma nine something like this random doesn't this look similar to something like uh, a mapping something like uh, a, a, a dictionary kind of thing where this is the key and these are the values for this key we can reach this for eight okay go to the uh, like for one like suppose we have to find the path from 1 to 7 so we look at the key one we look into its values if there is 5 uh, if if there is uh, like we know the path is 1 to 5 to 7 suppose we know this already okay so now we go from 1 to 5 in, in our code how can we do that in 1 check if there is an, a value of value present 5 and when we have a value present 5 right now in 5 check if there is a value present 7 it is so we can say that 1 through 5 to 7 is a valid path something like that right so doesn't it look like a mapping to you right i mean it looks something like that so it's something like where our key is an integer over here and value is basically a list of integer once again let me just erase Okay, so our key is integer and value is list of integers. Okay, but instead of even needing a dictionary to map this, do we really need a dictionary? When these are integers, aren't list indexes also integers? So can't we do something like, is this just a list of list of integers? I'm this I'm using these angular brackets to denote the type basically nothing nothing more just to denote the type of data type that we have type of data basically that we have so something like list of list okay so it suppose we have a graph like a graph or something a relation like this mapping. This kind of a structure is generally called a graph, okay, where you have these uh, these 
these points where edges run from each other are called as the the points which connect are connected are called as nodes so this is a node this is a node this is a node any a line that connects these any any two nodes is called an edge so this is called an edge so and this entire structure is called a graph don't worry you'll read more about it in your data structures and in future classes so don't worry about it um or we can have a separate video on graphs and getting started with graphs no problem so one two three suppose you have something like this so can't i say that at the so suppose i have a list i have four indices in list from 0 1 2 3 one two, four indices right Let me just quickly erase this is too far away let's make it a little closer hmm. so now um so can we say that like uh, let's make this a little bigger so we say that 1 4 3 something like this okay now as I was saying, using dictionaries in which integer keys and values list of integers, when we came down to this, I'm going to show you how this works, how this can also be used in this case. Because this key is an integer and the list indexes are also integer, we can treat them, the list uh, indexes as the key. So suppose something like one comes up, right? This one. What we do is at the index one, and since this is a list of list, so at one, we store another list which contains so I, I'll write something like one I mean at index one we have a list which can one second okay let's remove uh, this okay at index one I have something like what all connections are connected to one directly I have two I have three I have four I put two comma three comma four so then something like my original list let's call it let's call this list as list l so l of one dot append to similarly append three append four so on is it something like this so this is a basically what we have is a list of lists right so at index now at index two we have a connection to one right so one since this is like this is these are reversible connections right nowhere it's mentioned that if you go from one to two you cannot come from two to one right i mean if one can send a connection request to two two can also send a connection request to one i mean it's 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 nowhere written that two cannot send only one can send right so, so in two we will put the only connection which two has which is one right so this was at this this given index and in 3 we have 5 and 1 both right so in 3 we have 1 and 5 and in 4 okay so we had to make it a little bigger Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Um, we have till five, right? Okay. So in four, in four we have only one connection to which is one, and in five we have only one connection which is to three. right so this is how we model it i mean um will you, you you may get better understanding when we write try to write code for this but uh, this is this is what the implementation would look like in the code so we would have something like now one important thing to notice over here is one to two and two to one this this connection is not given two to one right we only have one to two i mean if someone would have to give this as input how would they give it the connections are one two 1, 4, 1, 3, and 3, 5. Right, how many edges do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. So, 4 connections are there, basically. Right? So, 
Now it's our duty that when someone gives us one to two, we also put in the twos list. When we also put one in twos list, we also put one in fours list. We also put one in threes list. Not only do one like one has three in its list, two in its list, four in its list. These numbers also should have one in their their cons their separate lists. Okay, that's how we model bidirectional connections because. Nowhere it's written that only one can go to two and two cannot go to one, right? So it's important to model it like that, right? So I hope you how I hope it makes sense how we took this data, how we model it in the form of a graph, and how we store that graph uh, for easily manipulating in our code. So in the next section, we'll take a better look at implementing this data structure and trying to. come up with the logic first we'll try to come up with the logic and then we'll see how we can implement the code so uh, see you in the next section um yeah all right so let's all right So let's discuss about the logic to solve this problem, right? So All right. Hmm. So from in the previous section we saw how how we can model the data to be able to store it inside our program. now let's see how we can operate on the data to find the answer to the question given to us so let's take an example graph so we have something like uh, random 2 3 4 5 let's say um 3 is connected to 6 4 is connected to 7 all right so let's pick up a problem like suppose one has to send connection request to 5 2 3 6 4 and 7 is there any one which has 4 degree no right so let's to make the problem a little bit more complicated not to complicate i mean to have no cases as well let's take 8 9 let's take this as also let's say 10 Eleven. All right. So let's say one has to send requests to two, five. Basically, all the other nodes, right? Two, five, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. So let's see. So we told that we're going to store it in the form of list of list, right? So let's let's do that. What we're going to do is for one, one is connected to two and five. So I'm storing my list list okay, and for every index, so how many indexes will I have? Starting from zero, zero to, so I'll have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, let's see what's stored at in index. Nothing is stored at index zero because there is no can no node which has zero written or no person with ID zero, right? So let's start with one. So in one. what do we store the direct connections of 1 2 and 5 so we store 2 and 5 similarly i told you when you are while you are storing 1 with 2 you also store 2 with 1 but since we are doing this on paper we can uh, do that later also but in in, in the code implementation implementation that will become clear more clear so because see why am why i am saying this is because sorry uh, so the connections will be given to you something like 1 to 5 1 to 2 1 to 5 now when we draw this diagram we are able to see that one is connected to 2 and 2 is connected to 1 but from this information you can re read that one is connected to 1 is connected to 1 next connection that will be given to you is 2 to 4 so after you come from one line this line to third line this information about 2 was also connected to 1 is lost so while you are storing Two in ones list. You also store one in twos list. So that's the thumb rule while storing it 
in your uh, program we'll we will get to it when we start implementing this program let's come back now so one has two and five right two has uh, two has three and four right so two has three and four also two what does two have two has one also right you don't have to forget this three has three has two and six right three has two and six four has two three and seven five has one only now you see in ones list we have five in fives list we have one so that bi-directional connection is being established five has one now if we go to six six has nine and three and ten right six has three nine and ten seven has eight and four again seven we don't we not only store eight we store four as well so seven has four and eight eight has nine and seven Now nine has six and eight. Eight and ten has six and eleven. And eleven has ten. So this is what the data we have. Right, and we have to answer. can one send request to every other node let's see <coughs> let's see one to two okay so before solving like obviously we can solve it while looking at this graph this graph that we have but in a program we don't have this visual representation right so only thing we can do is we can start from one we can keep on walking and see if we can find this node so it's in this problem the crux of this problem is basically how can you guys model this data that is given to you and be able to perform that walk right the problem is not at all complicated it just tests, tests how you can save this data in your program and how you can consume the data to be able to walk on the data right so um okay so let's let's see let's do a walk on this and try to come up with a list a list which is called as distance in which corresponding index like if this list there were how many people there were 1 2 3 4 5 10, 11 11 people were there right so there would be 0 1 12 indexes in this right initially we don't know what the distance is right so initially the distances would be a very large number we don't know what to say so let's say suppose uh, we call it infinity initially and then we start performing walk we start walking right we'll discuss how we walk, how we do the walking so we walk from 1 to 2 we walk from 1 to 5 we walk from 2 to 4 2 to 3 4 to 7 4 to 8 and while walking we remember how much distance we have walked till now okay that's what we are going to do so what we are going to do is we are at 1 right and we have to start from 1 so distance to 1 is we are already there right so for 1 the distance would already be 0 right I am ignoring the index 0 because there is no one with 0th uh, id so from 1 we can go to 5 and we can go to 2 how, how do I know that in my code I have this information from this list so I can anytime visit list of one will give me all the indices, all the numbers which are direct, which are in direct connection with one, right? So let's let's do one. Let's start with one. So I have stored as distance of one. So I'll say um, let me just clear it once and write it in a better way. Okay. So I'll say distance of 1 is equal to 0 right um, why did I write this and call no idea um, distance of 1 is 0 okay now let's try 
what all do we have from one we have five and two so let's maintain a list of what all we have right now we have five and two. okay so after reaching five and two what's the distance so let's take something out from this let's take five out from this list okay taking out i mean i'll just call it pop let's pop five out of this and we get so distance of five now is how did we reach five we reached it from one what was the distance of one it was zero plus how much have we walked one edge so plus one distance of five is there now what all nodes can be walked from five it can be one again right now if you see if i do distance of if from five i can walk back to one right one is that so distance till five was one and from five to one again it will be two but distance of one is zero right so how do we tackle that is we maintain something called as a we we basically keep track of what all places we have already visited right so that we do not double the distance basically so we will also maintain something called as a visited uh, a list which will a list or a dictionary that will keep track uh, what all uh, indexes we have visited till now all right so let's say we'll say that one is already visited so let's cross it off so one is already visited now for five only one was there so we don't since one is already visited so we don't don't go to one now five is already done we are left with two now in this list okay now we pop two out of this so again pop right what we are trying to uh, over here is try to fill this distance array that distance list that we have right fill the distances for all the nodes basically all the places that we have all the people that we have starting from the source so pop it off distance of two is this two came from one right so distance which is equal to distance of i'm sorry distance of one distance of one plus one which is equal to zero plus one which is equal to one so distance of two is also one and we mark five and two as visited right so five and two are visited now i'm crossing it off over here what all nodes can we visit directly from two in we check that in two's list we get three four and one all right so we insert that so three is it visited there's no cross on it. four is it visited there's no cross on it one is it visited yes there's a cross on it so we don't put we have three and four now right so i'm i'm, I'm basically trying to maintain a, a current current nodes in this list okay so we basically pop the numbers and whatever connections direct connections we have from a node we again push it into this current nodes we took out two we took all we put all the connections of two which are not visited into this current nodes again so we go to three and four now what all connections does three have i take a look at three's list i see two and six okay so is two already visited correct so i don't i don't do anything with two i see six so six so distance of six right is equal to distance of three plus one what was distance of three guys so distance of two plus one will be the distance of three so distance of two was one so distance of three will be we forgot to update the distance array over here distance of three is equal to distance of two plus one which is equal to two all right I mean, if you can see through the diagram, so we have come to six now. So one, two. Th so distance of three was two basically, right? From one to two to one. Here one, so one plus one two. And now, so distance of six is distance of three plus one, which is equal to two plus one, which is equal to three. So distance of six is three. And we mark six as visited. And for all the direct connections of six which are not visited. Which will be nine and ten. We put them into this list current nodes. So we will have 
3 is already popped so we will have 4 comma which are not visited right so 3 is already visited now we will put 6 and 9 right or for 6 okay 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 um start slight i just got lost in all this okay so coming back uh, so basically um, we have with distance of 5 okay so we started with 1 with 1 what are what, what were the direct connections of 1 again i'm i'm just recapping so that we i mean let's just catch a breath and we call it again so from 1 we went to 2 and we went to 5 we have these two so i had have these in current nodes mark them as visited i pop 5 out what are all the connections of 5 which are not visited there are no connections and we update the distance of 5 which is it's the node from where we are coming plus 1 right the distance of node so which was, it was 0 plus 1 which is 1 we have 2 and for distance of 2 we'll have distance of 1 plus 1 which will equal to 1 and what are all the connections of 2 which were not visited 3 and 4 right so we put 3 and 4 over there and let's just again rub let me rub this and we'll come back let's just write this clearly so that it's able to understand it in a better way and not confuse ourselves okay hmm okay so distance of two this one and with two the neighbors which were not visited were three and four so we we'll, we added them to current nodes let's take let's pop and get three right visited of three let's mark three as visited so we cross it let's calculate distance of three now let's update so distance of three from where did we reach 3 we reached it from 2 right so is equal to distance of 2 plus 1 which then becomes distance of 2 was 1 which we become 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 now what are all the neighbors of 3 which are not visited let's put them to current uh, nodes so 3 which is 6 because 2 is already visited so we'll put 6 so now we have 4 comma 6 again pop we get 4 let's mark 4 as visited so we we'll mark 4 as visited then 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 we mark 4 as visited and then let's update distance of 4 from where did we reach 4 we reached 4 from 2 so it will be distance of 2 plus 1 which is equal to 1 plus 1 which is equal to 2 so can we mark the distances so till here it was 1 till here it was 1 now 1 2 no, while well, 3 3 it becomes 2 to 4 it becomes 2 right okay so now what are all the neighbors of 4 which were which are not visited let put them let's put them to current list and we have marked 4 as so what are all the neighbors of 4 I go into fourth list I see 2 3 and 7 2 is already over 3 is already over only 7 is left right so how do we have 3 in fourth list 4 is not connected to 3 right 4 is connected to 2 and 7 only so this 3 is I mean we the mistake while adding but no problem doesn't affect so uh, 4 and 4, 4, 4, 4, we have 2 and 7, right? So, 4, the only neighbor which is not yet visited is 7. So, we put 7 in this list. So, this list we have now, 6 and 7. Let's pop again. Let's take out 6, okay? So, distance of 6 is equal to distance of 4 plus 1, which is equal to distance of 4 is 2. and plus one which is equal to three right so we get distance of six and we mark six as visited so let's do that let's mark six as visited the two is already visited three is already visited right so 
what are all the neighbors of 6 that are not visited let's put them to current nodes so the neighbors of 6 would be 9 and 10 which are not visited right so let's put 9 and 10 so we have 7 9 and 10 here on current nodes let's pop again okay so now we have uh, let's mark 7 as visited so we cross 7 over here and let's see so distance of 7 is from which node are we coming to 7 7 we are coming from 4 so it, it will become distance of 4 distance of 4 plus 1 right so it will become 3 2 plus 1 3 okay what are all the neighbors of 7 which are not visited so let's see 7 has its neighbor as 8 8 is not visited yet so let's put 8 in the current list so current notes list so we have 9 10 8 now let's see distance of 9 whose neighbor is 9 from where are we reaching 9 we are reaching 9 from 6 ok so let's uh, so it will be distance of 6 let's mark 9 as visited also and distance of 6 plus 1 so what is the distance of 6 distance of 6 was 3 so 3 plus 1 which becomes 4 ok and similarly so i'm not i'm not continuing because uh, it's obviously it's a lengthy process but similarly you just keep a track from where you came and you add in their distance and then you finally get a distance array so you, and then for all the queries you can check for so you can go from distance of six if this is greater than three print no i mean distance of any k that is asked to you so that's how you basically so how we solve this problem again take a take a look overall start from one source node put all its neighbors into a current nodes list take one neighbor out mark it as visited and all the neighbors which are not visited put them again in this list keep on doing this until the list is empty like you have no more i mean all the nodes are visited and you have no more nodes to go this my dear friends is called breadth first search you guys will read more about it in your data structures course and if you already know about it very good you can explore more about it so that's it for this section in the next section we are going to talk about the implementation of this problem all right so in this section we are going to talk about the implementation of this problem we are going to implement this problem in python hope you guys understood uh, the idea the basic idea of implementation in the last section if not please drop your comments or uh, try to watch it again try try to watch the last section again um so let's continue so let's take the input first so what we have is n which is number of people which is take it using n let's store m as number of edges now we have to store the connection network whatever is given to us so let's define as i said list of lists so we'll make our network as list for i in range n i will append a blank blank list so we, if you see we get a list of list want some input Let's get some random we also three and so three list of lists is created right now number of connections of for i in range m take the input of all the connections x comma y is equal to map input comma input Oops, sorry. all right now as i said bi-directional connections okay so network of x dot append y and network of y dot append x let's see our network i have this input 
in this file let's see our network after this input um list index out of okay sorry yeah so since list indexing starts from zero and this n is non-inclusive so let's do n plus one that's how range works right so see from one we have connections to two five seven nine two we have connection to one and four three we have only connection to five two is connected to six yeah so similar like this like this we have this now so um so let's go let's let's just keep on continue taking the input so after all the connections we have one source from where we have to start so source is equal to int input all right after that we have queries so queries is equal to int input after that we have uh for i in range queries let's take the uh, input so k is equal to in input now if if the distance so if distance of this node distance of k is greater than we are going to define so i'm just going through the basic so if distance of this particular id is greater than 3 print no let's print yes right so let's just now we have to make the logic to be able to solve this problem now so um we already have this for so now what all we are talking about we have one visited list which is false by default for all the all the numbers i mean all the people we have one distance list now initially we set the distance to a very large number for all of them so we define a number called as i infinity set it to a very large number 10 power 9 10 power 10 or something okay then we have inf into n plus 1 again n plus 1 because list indexing starts from 0 we have this source right so what i was doing we have a list remember from last section we have current nodes blank list as of now and we also since we start from our source node so distance of source distance of our source node which is distance of source becomes zero now current nodes what node we are starting with it's source right so correct nodes dot append source all right so now um while while len of current so while current nodes is not not empty we keep on traversing the graph that we have right the connections this is this is what were was our termination condition while the uh, current nodes is not empty we keep on traversing walking from one node to another and putting their neighbors to this so while current nodes is greater than zero um current node which on which we are is node of current nodes dot pop remember pop from last section so pop it every time node for any neighbors for neighbor in network of node. so for all all the neighbors of this given node list of lists how useful this is see so if now this neighbor is already visited if that neighbor is already visited, neighbor uh, let's say if neighbor if visited of this neighbor is false this neighbor is not visited let's mark it as visited visited of neighbor is true distance of this neighbor we are reaching it from this node that we have popped right should be distance of node plus one and, and 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 visited is done and for all its neighbor we even push this neighbor to current nodes oops current nodes dot append neighbor right after this code basically terminates i think we should have a distance array which is filled by which is already filled so let's just go through this code once again okay define a very long number very large number call it as infinity 
we take the input n number of nodes m number of edges or number of connections n number of people network is a list of lists for the number of connections given we take them as input so for one we store two and for two we store one similarly we take all the inputs we take the source node that is given to us we take a visited list mark it as false initially for all the nodes like all the nodes are unvisited um okay visited of all right so let's uh, since we are already starting with okay so uh distance is by default very large and we current nodes is a list distance of source from where you starting is zero already now we start from walking from source we put current nodes dot append source while we have elements left while we have nodes left while you have people left in current nodes take the person or take the node put all its direct connections into this current nodes and keep on doing this until we are done with all the nodes right so neighbor let's do one thing print distance of this let's see if this works okay as you can see from the graph that was given in this problem um if i can show you this was the example that was given right so this so yes no yes so this is what the input that we had and if you see the output yes no yes how it has come one sec hmm distance to zero is infinity because there is no connection to distance of one is two it should be zero right it's not zero because we haven't marked one as visited the source has visited right so visited of source since we have already started walking from source so visited of source should be two now let's see now it's zero so distance of 0 is infinity distance of 0 distance of 1 is 0 distance of 2 is 1 distance of 3 is 2 distance of so on so on so on so we have whatever we had from this picture we have it here so that's how we solve this problem guys um the implementation is really simple once you understand the core logic behind it this is what breadth first search looks like very simple start from one node You take all its neighbors. You mark each and every neighbor as visited. For all the neighbors which are not visited, you put 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 them in the current queue. This current nodes, I have I didn't tell you. It's basically, um, it's basically acting as a queue over here. What we are doing is we are inserting it from one end, like we are inserting it at the end, popping it from the front. So it works like a queue. And you learn in your data structures class that. Q is used in implementing breadth first search, and that's what we have done here using list in Python. Um, so this was pretty much the problem. Not very difficult once you understand the core logic behind it. I, I I'll say every problem is like this once you understand the core logic behind the problem. So hope you guys enjoyed this problem. I'll see you guys in another video with another good problem, and enjoy, have fun. uh try taking a look at this again if you did not understand feel free to mention your problems in comments and i'll try to reply to as many comments as possible thank you bye